Hi, I'm Wade from Thoroughbred Diesel, and today we're going to be installing an industrial injection fat shaft 6280 on this 05 Dodge common rail. You know, industrial injection is a name synonymous with fuel performance, and they do an excellent job of that. But, you know, we've sold industrial injection performance turbos for a long, long time. They've been in light duty diesel performance turbochargers for a long, long time. One of the staple tools in our toolbox here as salesmen at Thoroughbred Diesel has been the industrial injection fat shaft uh, line of turbos. Now this is their, this is just the fat shaft lineup in this family. You have the fat shaft, the super fat, and the uh, silver bullet turbo. We do a video where we explain all of those different series, where we also explain all of the technical aspects of this turbo, and we're going to link you to that in this video. But today we're going to be installing a fat shaft 6280 with a 14 centimeter turbine housing is going on an 05 Dodge Comrail. This is Adam's truck. You see it in a lot of our, our different videos. Big shout out to the guys at Industrial for sending us this turbo to try out. And we're, again, we're really, really excited about putting it on this truck. So we got a little baseline for you here uh, on Adam's truck. We're set it up on a tow tune. Uh, and uh, the truck produced 335 horsepower. It wound up about 700 foot, 745 foot-pounds of torque. Uh, we know some of the simulating that we did inside this truck. We kind of set it on the, the dyno, simulated pulling a 10,000-pound trailer behind it. We kind of have an idea of where we were at, boost numbers and EGT. And we're going to talk to you about that and what changes uh, what changes and what gains that we get from this Fat Shaft 6280. So, this video is also going to serve not only as highlighting the industrial injection fat shaft line of turbos, but it's also going to serve as kind of a placeholder for us for any 5.9 turbo replacements. If you need information on how to do that, this, will be, this video will be your go-to place for that. Now, the air upgrades that we're doing to Adam's truck, it's going to be kind of, uh, we're going to be doing it step by step. So we're going to be installing this charger today on a stock manifold. Go ahead and tell you right up front, if you're doing a turbocharger, if you're doing a performance turbocharger, you want to start, it, it's, it would be great if you could afford it, able to do it, to do an upgraded exhaust manifold with this as well. But we're going to stick this on the stock manifold because we're going to be looking for the gains that we get as we try new things with this truck. Aftermarket manifold, possibly an intercooler upgrade, intake manifold upgrade. So those are all things that we're going to try and look at those at what gains that we make in the truck in each of those different things that we're going to be adding to Adam's truck. So no more talking. Let's get started with our installation. You know, one of the nice things on a 5.9 engine, be it uh, common rail or or non-common rail, is the accessibility to the turbo. It's it's right there. And you know, there's a hundred different ways to do this installation. Some guys like to take the manifold off the engine and pull it all out in one assembly. I'm not gonna do that. I, I, I always just take the turbo off with the manifold on. And I think one thing that really, really helps that process to make it faster for you and make it easier for you is to take the passenger side fender well out. Now. I don't know what it is about fender wells, but guys just don't like taking them out. They damn sure hate them on Fords and Dodges as well. This fender well on these common rail trucks is pretty easy to get out. It takes maybe five minutes to drop it out, and it gives you a lot better accessibility to the turbo to be able to attack things like the clamps on the downpipe, um, the drain, the oil drain tube, the oil feed tube, things like that. The shock tower is in the way, but you can work around it. But that's my advice to you is to take the inner fender well out. So to start this installation, obviously the main thing that we've got to do is we've got to get the intake horn out of here. We've got our bank's intake that Adam and I just installed a few weeks ago here in preparation for our new turbo. So we're gonna go ahead and just remove it. Now, whatever intake you've got on your truck, same thing's gonna to apply to you here. You can take the box all the way off if you want to, or you can just take the intake tube off, which is what I'm gonna do here. Uh, nice feature of the bank's intake air is it's got, a, it's got a bellowed pipe that gets you a lot of movement at the intake itself so that you can just kind of pop it right off. So after you've removed your intake um, to the turbo, the, on the common rails, you have this straight uh, coupling, which is bellowed, going to your intercooler pipe. You just want to loosen up both of your clamps for your intercooler. And then 
What's really nice to have is something that's very dull that you can go around the outside of the lip of this boot and get it dislodged from the turbo. And then all you have to do once you've done that is slide your clamps down and then the intercooler hose will come right off. No need to remove it from the intercooler side. That's good enough right there. It still lets you get on turbo or it still lets you install your new turbo. If you don't want to do that, you can pull both the clamps off there and you can you can get that coupler off of the off the intercooler side pipe. It's it's a little tougher. I don't know why, but they love to they love to kind of seal that pipe so you can just take your your dull uh, pick there and go around that boot, but I'm not going to, doesn't need it on this one, so we're in good shape. So that's pretty much got us on top side uh, where we want to be. So we're going to go ahead and remove the inner fender well and show you all of the access from that portion of the truck. So we have our fender well out now, wanted to show you, um, this is where I'll access everything else as far as the bolts and everything goes, and then we'll move up top when we go to move the turbo out. But I wanted to show you a couple things. So while you were away, through the magic of video pre-editing, for lack of a better word, wanted to go ahead and loosen up the exhaust band clamp. Well, the exhaust band clamp breaks, which is pretty common, probably gonna happen to you. Um, we sell them on the website, uh, stock OE part number, it's a 521 number, I can't remember right off it, but uh, that broke. So, wanted to talk a little bit about how to get these V-band clamps off here, and I think we've talked about this in several little videos. Um, I have a heel bar, a very, very small heel bar. This does very well to work on the clamps. So on these V-band clamps, there's three different ears on it. You just get this heel bar behind the ear and you pop prize on it and that ear will pop off and then you go around and do it to each of the other three ears. Um, Gear Wrench makes this one. Uh, this is actually an adjustable head heel bar for lack of a better word. You can see it right there, it'll get in. That is a really, really nice tool to have for V-band clamps. I, on that back one, I just turn it like that where it's away from me and then I've got enough room between uh, the exhaust elbow to get it. So, so the V-band clamp, she is loose. And next thing we really want to talk to you about is doing your oil delivery line. So this is your oil supply line at the top of the turbo. I'll let Adam slide in there and take a look at it. To remove this, you really want to use two wrenches. You want to have a three quarter and a 13 16. Um, the supply side of it is actually metric, but 13 16 works, works really well. Your three quarter, you want to get it on the fitting between the turbo and the supply line. And Adam's adjusting that light there so you can see. Get it on the fitting and then Go ahead and loosen up the oil supply line. And that's good. So you want to hold that fitting so you can get that oil supply line off just like so. The next thing that we're going to go after is our oil drain tube. And uh, hard to get shots like this, but this is a 10 metric. And what I would just like to use is just a normal shallow well 10 metric socket and a quarter inch drive ratchet and it'll let you get right to the bolts. Put a little penetrating oil on them and then loosen them. There's one on both sides and you can get to that just like that and then to get on the inboard side of it, obviously just feel around till you get it and then get with your ratchet and then that, that gets your oil drain line off. Now, the next thing that I wanted to talk about is you're, you're close to having the turbo ready to come out. On these trucks you have uh, two studs going up and then uh, two studs going down. The downward ones are on the inboard side of the manifold. That is for ease of access. The downward ones are going to be the ones that we, we do first. And I'm going to show you real quick the tools that we use for that. And the tools that we use for that are six inch extension and the universal and then a 15 metric shallow. That allows you to go between the turbo and the block and get to both of those nuts, both of the 15 metric nuts, just like so. So we're not gonna be able to really show you that, but just that's the correct combination to get to it every time. I also like to use a little bit longer handled 3 8 drive ratchet 
This gives me the leverage that I need to break those loose because a lot of heat cycles through those, a lot of miles on them. This really, really gets it uh, broke loose well for us. The last two nuts that we have to get our turbo off of the stock manifold are your two outboard nuts. And the way the stock manifold lays, you really can't get the box end of a wrench or box end or a socket either, either on these nuts. The easiest way to attack this is with the old liquid wrench. No, now what you wanna do here is you just wanna take a torch and you just wanna get the nut red hot and then that will allow you to go ahead and spin it off with minimal effort from the wrench. And in fact, you can use the open end for this and then you can get it, you can get those nuts spun off. So that's what we did here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and before we drop the turbo, we move the, the turbo oil drain, just move it to where we want this turbo to be able to sit straight down. We just want it to be able to fall straight down once we take it off the manifold. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take these two top side nuts off and we're just gonna let the, the turbo sit straight down. All right, if you can see this, the last thing you wanna do is unhook the wastegate control solenoid. Just like so. So we're ready. I've got my oil drain out of the way. I've got my downpipe hook unhooked. All right, once you have removed the clamp for your exhaust, you want to go ahead and remove the clamp for the uh, elbow coming off of the exhaust side of the turbo. And don't be afraid to lose, use a little bit of heat here. Everything that has as many uh, heat cycles as this have, you're going to have rust here, you're going to have um, all the things that can make for a bad day. A little bit of heat on that clamp, if it's super, super rusty like this one is, a little bit of heat on it will let it come right on off. Uh, so don't be afraid to use everything, it, to use a little heat in there, just be careful what you're doing. And go ahead and remove this clamp and remove the exhaust elbow. All right, and once you've got your clamp loose, you can just kind of roll your elbow out. There's two little old locating dowels in here. We're gonna remove those once we get it up on the bench. Now, if you're right here in your turbo removal, you'll notice that once the turbo comes down, the compressor housing of the turbo sits kind of on the motor mount. And it feels like the turbo stopped. You can do a couple different things here. If you've worked it and worked it and worked it and you just can't get it loose, what you can do at this point is you can go and get yourself a little bit of heat and remove these two front studs and um, the turbo will work itself on out. Make sure you don't tear up any threads on the studs because you're actually going to use uh, the long studs back uh, in conjunction with a couple of short studs. But on this truck, it actually clears. So what happens is on these five nines, you can actually just kind of work the turbo. And that's what I was trying to get around to show you is the compressor housing. If you just kind of push the compressor housing forward, because once it comes down so far, if you just push the compressor housing forward, make sure that you don't hit and kink your oil drain line. That is very, very important and then it'll, it'll work itself out. So at this position right now, all we do is we, we just lift the turbo out from the top. We don't need to show you that. Just pull the turbo out, set it up, and lift it out from the top. So we're gonna get on top side of the creeper and pop the turbo out. Now that you've got your turbo out, you're gonna have to attack probably the worst part of this job, or hopefully for you, for your sake, it's, it's not the worst part of the job, but if you're gonna retain the stock manifold like we were doing here, you're gonna have to remove the two back studs. I've already got one of them out. But these studs from the factory are very, very long. Now, they're too long to mount to your new industrial injection turbo. So industrial injection sends you two much shorter studs that actually go on that inboard side of the motor. Let me tell you, in that manifold, with that manifold on the truck, you're better off to just go ahead and pull the manifold and, and do, do the job that way if, if, you, if you so choose to do. We're already this far into it. You only have to be able to retain two of these studs. Uh, get a good extractor. One of these female extractors like this, and what they do is they just go up on the stud like that, and then you can put a good ratchet on it and move the stud, a little bit of heat on it, just a little bit of heat on it, and it should come on out hopefully for you. That's what we've had to do here, but female extractor is definitely what you need to get. So we're gonna go ahead and get this other stud out and prepare to reinstall our two shorter studs from industrial. So we're gonna do a few things on the bench here. We're gonna show you the parts that you need to remove from your old turbo. We're going to show you the stud orientation 
for you, those of you guys that are going to be using your stock manifold back just like we just showed you uh, in the previous clip <clears throat> of the video and uh, then we're just going to talk to you about some of the things that come inside of the kit with your industrial injection turbo for the 03 to 07 common rail trucks now first off let's talk about the studs that are going to go on to this manifold now this is an old manifold that we had here it's got a broken stud in it but it'll serve the purpose that we're wanting to show you inside of our kit is going to come from industrial is going to come with two of the short studs and let me show you why they are the short ones your stock manifold studs there are two of these studs here there are two of these studs, uh, one, two in the manifold, two in your turbo, in your stock turbo that come out. Here is the stud from Industrial Injection. I'll try to figure out how to do that on screen where you can see that. But you can see where the stud from Industrial is a little bit shorter. The shorter studs go on the inboard holes, the holes closest to the engine on your stock manifold. That stock manifold is threaded for this. So that just screws into that manifold and this is what we're actually going to hang the turbo on when we first uh, when we first put it together now your long studs you're going to want to retain all of your nuts from the turbo uh, removal that you had there'll be four of them in total and what you're going to want to do with these nuts is you're going to want to put on the long studs you're going to want to put a nut on there and then you can just thread one of these long studs through the manifold and then you will put a, another one of the stock nuts on the, on the bottom side of it to hold it. So this is gonna, these studs are going to be held, are going to hold the turbo on with two nuts, one on the top and one on the bottom. So easy to see that, easy to install those. So make sure that if you, when you remove this and if you're using your stock manifold, that you're going to want to retain these long studs. Now, if you buy an aftermarket uh, manifold, those some of the manifolds come with these studs. If not, we have these on a, as a genuine Cummins part number that we offer on the website. You can purchase these right off of the website as well. So we wanted to talk to you just a little bit about the studs on these. I can tell you, and we're going to talk about this later on, if you have any problems getting these studs out of the manifold with it on the truck, this is going back to the previous clip that you just watched remove the manifold from the truck and get it on a bench and get some heat to it and you can get those studs out a lot easier you can tell that's why this stud this manifold has a broken stud in it that's where that comes from so that's enough about talking about the studs for the stock manifold again if you're going to upgrade your manifold if you're going to go to an aftermarket manifold uh, get yourself new studs. The orientation will be different, and each different manifold manufacturer has got different manifold, or different orientation, or different setups as well. Next, we're going to be talking about the things that come off of your old charger, and it's going to be rolling over to your new charger. First thing we're going to talk about is this cast manifold. This cast manifold that hooks up at the back of the turbo and then gets you your slight angle down to the exhaust pipe has two locating studs in it. Well, you can see one of them I left on right there. I'll show you that. The other one's already gone. I've already gotten it taken out of. These are just roll pins. They're simple, fragile little roll pins. And under perfect, perfect circumstances, they should pop right out. A little bit of heat, and they probably will. I'm gonna get a pair of ice grips on here, and I'm gonna show you what normally happens with these. Okay, and a little bit of heat and maybe some lube and the little roll pin should come right on out. <coughs> but I can tell you, unless I'm the luckiest guy in our, uh oh, I'll be doggone. That came right out. Hot diggity dog. That's great. They never come out, man. You always break them off. Well, awesome. All right, so that one came out. If you break one off, not to worry. Here's what we did on this one right here. You want to just get yourself a little bit of light emery cloth and get it down, broken as far close to the surface as you can. Hit it with a little bit of emery cloth, not too much because you don't want to remove material here. You just want to give it just a little quick rough up with the emery cloth. And what that'll do is that'll smooth that surface out. Just don't make sure you don't take any material off that because you don't want to have any exhaust leaks. That's awesome. Didn't think that was going to happen, but it did today. So that's uh, that's great. All right, now 
on to what is coming off of the stock turbo. The stock turbo, basically, both of these clamps are coming off. This, the smaller clamp, is the clamp that is closest uh, that is on that is closest to the turbo. The big clamp is for the exhaust pipe. Our big clamp at the exhaust pipe actually broke on us. I think we showed that in the video. We will be replacing this. This is an OE part number. We'll have these on the website and we'll link you to be able to purchase these as well. If you're changing out, even if you're just changing exhaust, this is a really, really nice clamp to have on hand because all of the heat and the temperature changes, pretty good chance you're going to break that bolt. And then this clamp, this is actually a Holset clamp, Holset part number, and it is on the uh, side closest to the turbocharger. What I like to do with this clamp is I want to make sure that a lot of rust gets built up on the, built up on this so you can't get it clamped down correctly after you get it apart. I like to wire brush that, okay, and just clean everything really, really good. And I like to wire brush my threads so everything is running real, real good because this is another 30 or $40 that if you can save this, you don't want to have to change it over from your old one. So there you go. That's clamps. Now, let's talk about uh, what comes in your kit from industrial injection so you know and obviously you've already got your kit so you already know what comes in there but I'm going to talk to you about each of the different sections or each of the different parts okay so you are going to get your drain tube gasket comes with this kit you get a new one of those then you're going to get your turbo foot gasket that uh, to replace at the uh, where the turbo mounts to the exhaust manifold this is a divided uh, flange gasket and then you are going to get your oil pressure inlet for your new turbo. You're going to get the two studs that I talked to about, talked to you about just a minute ago. And then you'll get two new nuts to go on those studs to hold those on. Now, the next thing that we're going to do, and I think after this we're ready to go in the truck, is we're going to prep our turbo to put it in the truck. Okay. And the way the what we're going to have to do here is we're going to have to go ahead and get our oil inlet in after this this is we're in pretty good shape here i'm gonna clean this up real good i like to use a little bit of thread sealing on this uh, loctite 545 is what we use for stuff like that keep from having to use uh, tape but uh, good thread sealant this is a uh, uh, this is an angled thread so it is going to seal so it doesn't take a, a whole lot here i just like to use it just to make sure. All right, and we're going to install that in the charger. Then go ahead and tighten it down. Again, this is an MPT thread on this, so you don't have to get crazy, crazy with it. Snug it down like that, and you're good to go. Um. Before I put the charger in the truck, I like to put this next clamp on, look at the orientation on my truck, and I want the uh, orientation of that clamp to be correct. So I'm going to go ahead and slap it on there. I like to have that done before I go back in the truck. I mean, it's not a have-to thing, but just nice keep you from having to fight it in the truck because when I put my uh, pipe up there, I can, I can still spread that out enough to, to get them both clamped on there. So, yeah, once that's done, you're ready to put the turbo in the truck. On the bench and setup, we talked to you about the two short studs that industrial send for you guys that use the um, stock manifold. You just want to go ahead and, and install those in the threaded holes of the manifold, which is the inboard side closest to the block. And we're going to throw those on real quick. I should have put the other one in to make the video just a little bit faster for us. And I just run those all the way up because the foot of the new turbo is actually pretty thin and voila so we'll run those up and just hang tight then you're going to obviously you're going to want your manifold gasket on there and have it ready to go once you hang your turbo on sometimes they'll stay up there sometimes they won't i can angle it like that and it'll stay just fine so now we're ready to drop our turbo in so my good assistant, Boo, is going to drop the turbo in from the top for us. So we'll get down here and get ready to catch it. We'll be using the two nuts that Industrial supplied us in the kit. And I'm going to help guide him down here. 
you want to watch your AC lines and whatnot. Okay. And there went our gasket. Never fear, okay. we'll catch it. Okay, I heard you boot. Sorry. I'm sorry about that. I wasn't ready. I'm sorry about you. Sorry about that. You nice people at home there. Okay. going to do is we're going to get our light out because because it's in the way that's right boo that's exactly right okay so now we're going to turn the turbo around turbsky turbo turbolicious yes yeah, yep so now folks if you can't accomplish that, take one of your long studs, put a nut on it, just like so. All right. And sneak your stud in from the back to your long side. Actually, probably easier just to drop it in from the top. Actually, no, it's not. So there that is, folks. And you couldn't see a bit of it because I was in the way of the whole thing. So what we wound up doing there is we wound up catching it on our long stud. And what that does is that gets the turbo hung and it gives us time to be able to orient the rest of them. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go for my long stud on the front here. I'm gonna go ahead and slap a nut on the bottom of it. And then uh, it's a little easier to get to from Boo's angle there, I think he can weasel it in. Oh, thank you, Boo. And we can come from the, I think we can come from the bottom up on it, Boo. If not, then we'll go another direction. All right, there. Now, there you go. Now there's two of the long studs hung and all we have to do now is we'll go for our short studs on the back side of it and just use whatever you got to use combination of sockets and swivels and so on uh let me uh let me get lined up to put those in and in fact might be able to get them from the top side but to get them what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to bring our uh, long studs we're going to want to go ahead and snug them up a little bit to bring the turbo tire to the manifold and it'll be easier to work with the shorter studs so we're going to cut away here that way we can do some cursing and then when we come back and we'll show you how to do it so we want to talk about tightening the turbo to the manifold and what does it take to do that so as you're doing this job you're going to notice that um, there's just none of these bolts except for these back two on the outboard side here are pretty well clear shots with everything. So, and there's no real 100% uh, technique to get them all the time. Here's what I'm gonna tell you. A 15 metric box or open end is, is your friend. Even if it takes you just a few turns, just a little, uh, a couple of turns, that's what, that's, 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 that is what it, it is what it is. That's what it's gonna take. The nut on the inside on the inboard stud not this stud but the one closest to the motor that one is probably the worst one uh, i'm going to tell you on it it is a longer 15 metric and just kind of get it lined along the block there and then just a little a couple of turns you know small turns there and eventually you'll get it um, it's it's not that big of a deal it's just something you got to work at so open ends and get everything tight make sure everything seals there so I um, wanted to make sure that I made mention of that because we didn't actually show it in the installation. We just showed um, bringing the turbo to the manifold and catching it, um, but just wanted to make mention on how we how we actually tighten that up because you'll you'll have some questions on it as you're doing it. It is it's kind of aggravating, but you'll you'll get there and, and get it tightened down. So the next thing we want to do is we want to put our uh, turbo outlet elbow on the turbo. And what I like to do on these is I like to go ahead and hang my clamp that's going to be at the turbo itself, that's going to clamp the elbow to the turbo. And then I'm just going to go ahead and install the turbo. Now, your clamp for the exhaust pipe, um, 
So when the elbow's off of it, the, the, the exhaust pipe is kind of at rest here. So, uh, and if, it, if you have any problems with that, you can take the bracket off of the engine, but it's kind of at rest right there. I just leave this clamp off until I get everything on. Uh, in fact, if you want to, you can, you can hang it around the, the elbow like that, but I don't like to do that right out of the gate because I like to try to get everything installed or get the elbow installed and before I put the big clamp on. So, and when you go to put it in there, what I've found is the easiest to do is kind of throwing it in and kind of exactly the way it's going to lay on the turbo. So, I'm going to kind of clear everything and then just like that, it'll fall in. So, what I'm going to do here is and it's there's really not going to be a camera shot for this but what i'll do now is i'll back this clamp out open it up all the way and i'll set it over the ears just like so all right and then that catches that and then i'll tighten it up just a little bit just hand tight so that it can't jump off the ears and then I'll have someone help me. But what I'll do here is I'll just push the exhaust pipe up and should be ready to clamp it. So what I'm gonna do is I'll take my, I'll take my clamp for my exhaust pipe. I'll turn the, uh, the bolt the way I want it. And I'll just slap it over the manifold there like that. And then it's ready to go. So now all I gotta do is just get myself some help push the exhaust pipe up and then we'll catch it on the clamp. Got the elbow on. Now I wanna go back just a little bit there. I, I talked to you about placing the elbow onto the turbo and then bringing the exhaust pipe to it. That didn't work out for us in this instance. If you have a problem with the turbo down pipe, you wanna make sure that you unbolt it from the bell housing and that gives you a lot more room for the uh, down pipe. That's what we did. We unbolted from the bell housing and then what we wound up doing is putting the elbow into the exhaust pipe and then bringing that whole assembly back towards the turbo. That's how we did it. Every truck is going to be different. Every exhaust kit is going to be different. And what sucks about the exhaust systems, let's just talk about this for a second, is when you get rust on those clamps, especially if they're the bar style clamps, it's hard to get the, uh, hard to get the exhaust apart the way you need it to. So I, you know, in, in that case, if you have to wind up cutting the downpipe or something like that, holler at us, we, we carry lap joint clamps so we can, we can figure something out to help you have to put it back together. Uh, but anyway, that's the way it needs to go. It need, or that's the way it worked on our truck. We actually put the uh, elbow into the exhaust pipe and then brought that whole assembly to the turbo and then caught it. It's definitely a two-man job, so you want to make sure you've got a couple people there. Now, the worst part of this job, I'm going to be honest with you, is the downpipe. Uh, you'll see a lot of people do this job where they take the, uh, the or I, I didn't mean downpipe, I'm sorry, the oil drain tube. You'll see the, this job done. A lot of people, they'll take the oil drain tube out of the pipe, then they'll bolt it to the turbo and then set everything in and then fight it in the block. I just don't like doing that. If for me, it's never worked well that way. <coughs> so what I do is I take the lesser, for me, it's the lesser of two evils, and I work with the pipe to get it back to the turbo. There's no real way to do this. There's no real best way I can tell you. What I like to do is I just like to make small movements at a time with the drain tube and I'll, I'll move it and I'll start getting it closer just like so. And I'll, I'll just keep making small movements like this. Now, um, one thing I do do is I use a gasket adhesive on this, this spray of gasket sealant. What that does is when I go to take my, uh, my gasket in that industrial sends in their kit, I just put it on the end of the tube there, like so, and I put some spray adhesive on it, and that sticks that gasket in there to where it doesn't fall out. You can get it lined up with the turbo and then slide it in, you know, if you've got just a little paper thin way. So either way it does it, but that's what it's got. And then you've got your two bolts that'll have to go back in. There is enough clearance to get through here with a long extension and a quarter inch drive bar, eight metric on this and a universal and you should be getting to it. So we're gonna get this drain tube lined up with the turbo and get the bolts in. We're gonna show you uh, bringing it on up. 
Okay, so what we've got is we've got the drain tube lined up here, and we just, again, we just massage it, keep getting it into position as best you can. So we're ready to go right there. You can see the gasket is on. This little stick'em stuff I was talking to you about does a good job of that. So I'm trying to hold a light and hold the tube at the same time. So we're gonna go ahead and place our two metric eight bolts in. We've got our drain tube hooked up, so we're really at our finishing touches of oil fill line or oil supply line and the intercooler pipe. Intercooler pipe on this truck was turned uh, like this from the factory, and that's fine, but we need to get this turned up just a little bit for better alignment with the turbo. If not, it's going to have a pretty bad transition from the discharge side into the intercooler pipe. We got the clearance here to be able to tweak on that just a little bit, so we're going to have to get this. Uh, we're gonna have to get this on the turbo. Now, to show you how to do this, the industrial discharge is large. It's, 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 it's a, it is big, but your factory boot will work. You've just got to, you gotta work with it. So here's what I do. I take it and I loosen it from the, from the intercooler as, as best I can, obviously, and get it to where I've got, you know, full, full movement of it. And what I do is I start it pretty deep on the back side there and then i take a a, a, a good soft o-ring tool or something like that and try to just keep working it around until it goes on just like so and then what i'll do is i'll just continue to work back and forth like that until it gets over the hump just like so, and that's what we do. So it takes a little bit of time, but you gotta get the, you gotta get the, the intercooler boot on there and across and back so you don't have, um, you know, you don't have any boost leaks or anything like that. And you just keep working with it and slowly but surely it'll climb on on there. Okay, so all we gotta do, don't put any grease on this or anything like that. You don't wanna do that. It will go on there. You just gotta keep working with it. Be patient and keep working with it and it'll go on on the turbo. So get enough of it on there to get a clamp on and you're off and running. So we're gonna work this back on the turbo and then we'll cut back in, show you what it looks like when it's up on the charger. All right, so we've got enough of our intercooler um, pipe uh, boot up on here to where we've got enough that we can get a clamp comfortably on it and behind the collar. That's the main, main thing. I just kept rolling and working that. You just you just keep working it. I, you just, just keep working it, get your clamps back on it and go, it's a booger. I'm, I'm not gonna lie to you. It is, an abs it's, it is an absolute pain in the ass, but it'll go. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna put my intercooler pipe back together and then I'll get it to where I can orient it and it looks good um, to where it's not, we're not having any big kinks or anything like that. Because if you have a kink in an intercooler pipe like this and the way you do it, or if you try to, you know, if you try to half ass it and, and you get a kink in it, what you've done there is you're gonna make a restriction. And when you make a restriction, you're gonna have discharge air that hits that restriction, so that puts even more pressure at that point. When you have more pressure at that point, I promise you, you're gonna have boots that pop off and you're just gonna have problems. So get, air, just keep twisting on the pipes, keep getting everything to where it's 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 out of the way and where it's it, it's gonna have a good flow from the charger into the intercooler with little back pressure or little places to cause turbulence in your airflow. So we're gonna go ahead and get everything lined out here and put our intercooler boots on and then we will do our oil supply. All right, so we got our intercooler pipe in and we've got it clearing out. Now, I wanna make a note here. We had the bank's intake on this truck and the bank's intake will not work with the increased size of, or the increased position of this intercooler pipe. With the super scoop on here, it was an awesome setup. It is an awesome setup, but with this orientation of the turbo, and the intercooler pipe is just not gonna work for us. We're gonna have to switch out. Uh, air boxes do not run this charger with a stock box. Stock box just does not flow enough for the charger. It will void your warranty. All right, all those things being said, this is your wastegate fooler. Uh, you need to purchase this for the 04 and a half to 07 trucks. We're gonna go ahead and install this back into the harness where it came from and back from the stock location. So we just run that in there and uh, stick it on like that. And then what we need to do is we need to charge the 
turbo with a little bit of clean 1540 oil. And what I like to do here, and I say this, is I like to use a gear oil end. I just save them when I do gear oils here in the shop. This is just regular old 1540. And we'll, we'll pour it in the charger. And we just want the charger to have a little oil in it and not to drop the thing. So I'll spin the impeller wheel a little bit and get her lubed up in there. All right, so I want to clean my oil up too because if not, when you fire it up, you'll have smoke everywhere and you'll think the truck's on fire. You don't want to think the truck's on fire because the truck's not on fire. So now we're going to reinstall our oil supply line. I'm weird about this. I like to get this flat before I start my line. Go ahead and start it like that. Get it tightened down. Okay. And I'll grab my wrenches. I like to keep a three quarter inch wrench on the bottom fitting because I don't like for it to spin while I'm tightening it. So I'll put that on there and then I'll just take a 13 16 and I'll tighten my stock line back down. Snug it up. All right, that's good. Now, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna throw the three quarter smooth on the ground. So <laughs> it's been one of those days, guys. So we got a little bit of cleanup to do here to get us ready. We're gonna put our intake uh, back on. What I'm gonna do with that is I'm just gonna use the bank's uh, intake shield and everything, and that gives, gets us a free flowing filter. I'm gonna put my stock box back in it for right now. We just need enough to make a few runs on it on the dyno and get the truck up and going. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna fire up the truck right now. We wanna leave the, the fender well out. So while we're looking for leaks on it, and uh, yeah, yeah. Fire it up, look for leaks, check everything out, put your fender well back in, and then she's ready to go. You will want to do some heat retorques on these. You're gonna wanna come back to the mounting studs on the turbo uh, after a couple of, of heat cycles on them, and you just wanna tighten those nuts back up uh, there. So yeah, again, fire it up, look for leaks, drive it, and enjoy. So. This is the industrial injection, 62 millimeter on a 05 Dodge, so 04 and a half to 07s. We're gonna come back in, we're gonna give you our test results and some ride along and just talk about the charger, but the installation portion of the video, we are complete. All right, so just a little ride along here and we're gonna talk through some stuff on our Fat Shaft 6280 installation. Um, this is a, I guess the first thing that comes to my mind to be able to explain this turbo overall. This is a really, really fun turbo. Um, and I say that because, you know, this truck is uh, stock CP3, stock injectors, can tuning. We're just using Edge Evolution on here. Uh, but our Edge Evolution on the big tune in this truck is just, it's, it's a ton. It's a lot of fun. It really is. Now, uh, this charger in a 6280 configuration is probably not the right charger for you guys that are uh, looking for a good towing charger, something that lights up real quick, uh, gets on top of the uh, gets on top of the uh, uh, of the trailer, and, and you're able to to get that low end response. This is not a low end turbo. This is a mid range and top end power turbo, and it makes good power. It's a lot of fun to drive on top end. I would explain this turbo for as a guy that's going to be growing into injectors, growing into CP3s, and looking for a turbo that's going to support him up to a horsepower number, 500 horsepower um, to 550 or something like that. I think this is a great, great charger for you in that aspect. Um, you've really, really got to watch, um, you know, when you're using can tuning and things like this. Uh, with this charger, you really got to watch EGTs as well. So, like right now, we're just cruising down the road. And 50 miles an hour and we're making uh, while we're coming up on it we're making it 55 miles an hour we're cruising about 2 psi and about 800 degrees egts so uh, when you really call on it that's where this this charger really shines at 55 mile an hour if i romp on it it lights and once it passes 10 psi truck is gone ass down nose up and we're getting down the road a lot of fun really really a lot of fun so again 
not the charger for you guys that are wanting to slap a charger on to make your towing experience better. If you're in the kind of same configuration as what we are, it's not going to be for that. But if you're wanting to charge, it's a lot of fun, uh, good time for daily driving, make power. This is going to be a good charger for you. So now we're going to lead you into our dyno segment where we're going to dyno this. We're not going to put it back on the tow tune. This charger does not like the tow tune. It's just not enough fuel for the charger. We're going to put it back on the dyno. We're going to get you a finer, final overall horsepower number of what the truck made on big tune charger and let her eat. So we, we get, we're set up for our dyno uh, with our fat shaft 6280 on here. Um, we made, I think it was 490 something, I can't remember the number exactly, before with the stock charger on it. So we're gonna make a pull here, see what the uh, uh, what the fat shaft does. You ready, Dave? Go ahead. Yep, go. We wound up increasing horsepower a little bit, made, a, made, made quite a bit more torque. We were at, uh, on the big tune here, we were 493 and 1078. We're making uh, uncorrected 506 and 1157. So, you know, that's pretty good. That's, you know, it's a good increase in torque and, and what is the increase in horsepower there, you know, uh, over over 10 horsepower 13 horsepower so this charger in, in particular is a charger that you're really wanting to grow into this is a charger for a guy that's wanting to make horsepower um, and I guess it's kind of starting his journey towards um, towards an ultimate horsepower number a 6280 on this truck with stock injectors in it and really can tuning Nice charger, makes more horsepower, but not a good charger for towing, everyday driving. This charger needs to be a little bit smaller, but for what this charger is, for a guy that's look, making, looking to make that jump in horsepower to get you over that 500 horsepower mark, this is the charger for you. This charger runs well, drive pressure on, this, on the charger setup is good. EGTs are completely manageable on this with, with can tuning. Again, you know, custom tuning, uh, change of injectors, so on, is gonna really, really dial this in to make this a really, really perfect package. So overall, thumbs up for the industrial uh, 6280 charger, the Fat Chef 6280. Like I said, again, you guys are getting ready to cross over into that 500 horsepower plus mark, this is definitely the charger for you. So we're gonna link you in this video where you can purchase this charger. If you have any questions about this, just give us a call, like and subscribe to our channel. Thank you for your business and thank you for watching.